One of the greatest design challenges has been to build a car that could travel anywhere, literally. been a favorite of comic books and movies. Once under the water, the wheels would retract inside the body. It would be powered by propellers, which would push the streamlined vehicle to 20 knots. The small fins would steer it through the water. Tanks would provide air for the driver. The body would have to be specially reinforced to cope with the immense pressure of deep water. The windshield would be made from specially reinforced glass. This car is a fantasy, but there have been many attempts to build a real car that could rule the waves. The Amphicar was designed by Hans Trippel and produced in Germany in the early 1960s, but it was a failure. It had a basic design fault. Its steel hull rusted in salt water. Forty years later, one car manufacturer finally succeeded. The Dutton Mariner is the brainchild of designer Tim Dutton. Well, I've been making cars for 25 years now, and um, I thought I wanted to try something that was slightly different from what I've been doing before, which is just normal road cars. Um, living on the coast, I do a lot of water skiing and playing around with boats at the weekend, so I thought, let's try and combine the two. amphibious car. It's based on a standard Ford Fiesta, but with a boat-shaped watertight body shell constructed from fiberglass. The hull is sealed around the wheel struts. Really, it's just like a big bath with an engine in it. That, that, that's why the engine keeps dry, is because it's, uh, there aren't any holes between the hull uh, and the engine bay. Well, the very first time we took a prototype in the water, obviously it was quite frightening because we hadn't done it before and we didn't know whether it would just keep going down the slipway and just keep going down, down, down under the water. When we do take people out on demos, you can see they're sort of almost holding onto the dashboard because although they know it's going to float, it's still the thought in the back of the mind that I'm sitting in a car and I shouldn't be doing this. There's a sealed bulkhead between the engine and passenger compartment. If the car's hull is pierced below the waterline, the boat won't flood and sink. The car has a top speed of seven knots and can cope with rough seas. In fact, Tim has driven across the English Channel to France, an ocean journey of 30 miles. It's just the expression on people's faces when they see something plummeting into the water and it actually floats off into the distance. And it's good fun anyway. We've sold cars to people that actually use them for work and for getting from island to island or from a big boat to the shore. <laughs> 